Welcome to the Google Cloud Security Showcase, a special web series where we'll focus on security use cases that our customers can solve with G Suite and Cloud Identity. My name is Ravi Kiran Kumar, and I'm a product manager at Google Cloud. Today, we'll be walking you through one of the top questions we get from our customers. How can I manage Windows 10 devices within my organization? Your G Suite endpoint management currently allows you to manage Android devices, iOS devices, Chromebooks, and Jamboards. We extended this functionality to manage desktops using advanced Windows management. This feature includes two key components. First, admins will be able to use a simple, easy-to-use interface to manage all Windows 10 devices. They'll be able to see the inventory, push Windows settings, and also perform admin actions like remote wiping a device. The second key component is login. Your end users will be able to log into Windows devices using G Suite credentials. OK, let's jump into a quick demo. All right, so let's look at uh, the Windows management up close on the admin console. So here's the familiar admin console where you manage your G Suite or cloud identity. So we'll first start with uh, the Windows settings, so where you can configure Windows settings and how you push it. And then uh, we'll look at uh, the device inventory and the admin actions. And then finally, we'll wrap it up uh, with uh, the audit logs. All right, so let's start with Windows settings. I'm clicking on devices section here. And then click on Windows settings. So this is the place where you can set your Windows settings. So you start with uh, clicking on, say, account settings, where you can designate whether the user should get a, a standard user account or a local account. If you already have some support accounts and other local administrator accounts, you can designate those. Um, and then you can apply these settings at the root level or any of the OU level. Now let's go back and look at, so you can also um, add Windows update settings, BitLocker settings, and uh, there are close to 1,000 settings you can uh, apply using uh, this interface. So if you don't see a specific setting in this interface, so you'll be able to use uh, the custom settings feature. For example, let's say I want to disable camera. So I'll start adding a custom setting I'll say disable camera, and then I'm typing in this camera here. So you'll be able to see help information for each of these. Uh, the setting that I'm looking at is uh, the allow camera setting. And uh, if I want to disable, I'm clicking on zero. So you must be wondering where you can get this information on this OMA URI and the value. Uh, we have uh, documented uh, the common custom settings that most people use uh, in the help center. So when you expand one of these, you'll be able to see the OMA URI and the value. Um, so we have a number of common settings here, but if you want to look at the entire list of settings, so we do have uh, uh, links to Microsoft documentation, which provides more information. So once you apply this setting, you'll be able to apply to the root OU, or you can select one or more sub OUs, and then you can apply. All right, okay. So uh, this is how you set your Windows settings. Now let's go back and uh, look at the device inventory. So I'm back to device management page. I'm clicking on endpoints. In endpoints, so you'll be able to see all your endpoints, whether it's mobile devices, desktops. So I want to specifically look at uh, the Windows devices that are managed using uh, enhanced desktop security for Windows. So I'm clicking on managed management type, and I'm clicking on enhanced desktop security. If you're one of those companies who don't use Windows management, who are using only GCPW, you'll be able to see all your devices that have GCPW by clicking on this checkbox. I'm clicking on apply and I'm opening this device here. So you'll be able to see uh, 
all the device information like device ID, serial number, host name, and a bunch of other information about this device. You'll also be able to see when uh, did the device uh, sync with the server so that you can see when uh, the device received all those Windows settings the last time. And then you can also see uh, the user and the owner information here. And from an admin actions perspective, so you can do a bunch of admin actions here. So you can block this device so that uh, you can't access G Suite or other resources using this device. Uh, you can sign out the user, um, wipe the device, you can unenroll the device. And then uh, finally, you'll be able to look at uh, the audit log associated with this particular device. So now you'll be able to see the entire audit log. I have a filter on this particular device ID here. You'll be able to see all the settings that were pushed to this particular device, um, at the time when it was pushed, and also uh, the error codes, or whether it was success or failure, all that information is available here. Uh, if you want to look at uh, the device um, audit logs for all your devices, again, you can simply go to your reporting section and click on devices. This is where you'll be able to see all that information here. The Google Credential Provider for Windows allows users to sign in to Windows devices using Google Credentials. It also provides an easy way for administrators to enroll devices for management and control of user accounts. Now, let's take a look at it in action. Okay, so I have a, a Windows 10 device uh, with GCPW installed. So the next time when the user reboots their machine, uh, this is how it looks uh, when they first log in. So the login screen looks familiar. The only minor change the user will see is instead of uh, seeing a password box below the username, you'll be able to see a text that says uh, sign in using the work account. So now let's start the login process by clicking there. The user starts logging into Google and then answers a two-step verification uh, challenge there. And now we're logging automatically into uh, the windows behind the scenes. All right, and during this time, we're also enrolling this particular device in uh, Windows management. If you have disabled the enrollment uh, to operate GCPW in a standalone mode, uh, the enrollment will be skipped. And uh, during the first login process, we're also creating a device entry so that admin can see this device in um, their inventory. So now once the user logs in, uh, the user can open their browser. And in this case, uh, I'm accessing uh, the Gmail you can access any Google resource without entering Google credentials. And uh, this is another single sign-on solution that is tied to G Suite and Cloud Identity. So you're able to access those third-party applications um, with single sign-on experience. Now let's see uh, how it looks when you try to access a G Suite desktop-based application. So here, we're trying to access Drive File Stream. The first time when you access Drive File Stream, it asks for those OAuth grants. And uh, from the subsequent uh, accesses, you can just uh, directly access uh, Drive File Stream, again, without entering uh, uh, the Google password or uh, the username. Thank you for tuning in. Please visit cloud.google.com security for more content from Google Cloud Experts. <laughs>